Hey guys, welcome to Responsibility. Today we're going to talk about how we can transform our outdoor spaces into an oasis for native insects, birds, and other wildlife through the use of plants. Now, as you can see, it's crazy cold here in Texas, but I can think of no better time to start planting a garden than when you're stuck indoors. So whether you own 10 acres or live in an apartment, making informed native plantings can be so rewarding and beneficial for you and your neighborhood ecosystem. So we're going to start by touching on the three key things uh, that we need to attract wildlife to our gardens. And those are, of course, food, water, and shelter. Right? So food can be as simple as plants that animals eat, right? whether they utilize them for nectar, berries, maybe they're eating the leaves themselves, or, or the, you know, the seeds that it produces. Uh, and then sources of water are as simple as having a bird bath, or if you have the time, installing a pond or even a wetland. Uh, and then shelter is as easy as putting out bird nesting boxes or keeping a brush pile. But also plants can act as shelter, right? So if we have trees and shrubs and other large plants or even grasses, they can serve as shelter as well. So the second thing we want to look at is how do we evaluate our space and what do we look for when we're considering uh, our native plant oasis and trying to design that? So when we evaluate our spaces, we're looking at things like how much sunlight does an area get? Uh, is the property on a slope or is it in a depression? What kind of soil is there? Is it a clay that holds a lot of water or is it a really fast draining soil? So the answers to these questions can help inform your plantings. Plants that are adapted to drier areas might not perform in clay soils that trap water, uh, but there are workarounds for some of these things, right? So we can amend the soil or we can select more tolerant plants like native grasses. So another thing to keep in mind is the seasonality of plants. So considering seasonality can help your garden be vibrant and ecologically productive year round. So when selecting plants, think about the bloom periods and when the seeds will be available for wildlife. Some plants have a really long season and others are short lived. Berry producers like the native Yopon holly or Ilex vomitoria where I live provide excellent texture and color for us and food for birds. And though they're often overlooked, native grasses are also an extremely beneficial component of ecosystems as their seeds continue to provide food for wildlife when most flowering plants have already gone dormant. So once you've evaluated your area, you're ready to start selecting your plants. Now not all natives are created equal. Some are more ecologically productive than others, and some natives to your state might be totally foreign to wildlife in your area. Ideally, you want to select plants that occur as close to your location as possible in the wild, so you know the animals in your area will benefit. State delineation, if you live in a large state like Texas, can be misleading. So for example, if you live in the Chihuahuan Desert of West Texas, a Gulf Coast Texas native isn't going to be as beneficial or adapted as a plant that is woven into your landscape, like Verbicina and Celioides or the cowpen daisy. So find your ecoregion and use plants adapted to that region instead. The EPA provides a detailed ecoregion map by state. I'll link it in the description. Another incredible new resource is the Native Plant Finder at nwf.org. This is still in beta mode, but it's a super simple way to find plants that actually occur in your area. After you put in your zip code, you're given a list of locally native plants, and you can even search plants by insect host. Often plants are ranked by the number of insects they support, so you can be sure your selection is doing the most good. Other resources include wildflower.org, which is the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center website. They have a ton of relevant information on many native plant species, even ones that aren't commercially widespread. You can also talk to your local master gardeners or if your state has a master naturalist program, and often these organizations are very knowledgeable and they'll have a lot of recommendations for you. And a quick word of warning, if you do decide to hire a landscaper, uh, be sure to check their species list to make sure the plants are a good fit for your area. Sometimes native is used in industry to describe native and naturalized species, which may be invasive. So just double check to make sure that the plants that they're putting in are actually 
native and will be beneficial rather than harmful uh, to your local ecosystem. So there are some things to keep in mind when planning your native oasis. So even if all you have is a patio or balcony, you can still provide habitat for wildlife. Container gardening, freestanding bird baths and bird houses can all brighten up apartment life. When I had these things at my apartment, I did have the thought, is someone going to steal my plants or my hanging bird bath? And when I thought about it, I realized that if someone did steal it, that means they thought it was valuable. And that made me think, okay, even if it gets stolen, I can replace it, and that means there's at least one other person hopefully taking care of wildlife. Now on the other hand, if you do have a lot of space, you have the freedom, and some would say responsibility, to do things like add a larger water feature, plant more trees, shrubs, and vines, and reduce the amount of lawn being maintained. If you have enough space, you could even install a wetland. So these DIY designs can be rewarding, fun, and informative. And best of all, they can be years in the making. You don't have to plan and install your native oasis overnight. So thank you all for your attention and your plant compassion. If you're enjoying Resplansibility, please subscribe and share it with your friends and neighbors. You can find me on Facebook and Twitter, Resplansibility, uh, and my YouTube channel will be updated with new videos every Friday. Feel free to leave comments and questions on the videos, or you can send me an email at wanderinginsearchofplants at gmail.com.